good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome again to Adonai's Kingdom. This is the channel whereby we talk about the Kingdom of God, Jehovah's Kingdom, with no strings attached. We compare and contrast the Old and the New Testament. We bring them together and we discover that everything is the same. It was and is and will be the same. There's no contradiction because we follow book by book, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, and at the end of the day, we are happy because we gain everything. My name is Waudi the Messenger, and you are welcome from all corners of the world for today's video. Before we start, as usual, we can start with a word of prayer, thanking Jehovah. Father Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we honor your name. We lift up your name, O oh Father, with our holy hands. Precious are your ways, mighty are your works. Your laws are superb, O oh Father. In you, we give you the glory. Help us today, O oh Father, King of Kings. As we start to go through your word, fill us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless all my viewers, protect them, guide them, heal them from their plagues of others. Give peace in their families and friends. In whatever they do, cover them with your mighty wings. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and forgive us of all our sins, O Father. We welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Okay, guys. Uh, before I start with my reading, my teaching, there's something I want to tell you about. Uh, usually it's for brothers, si brothers and sisters. Mm, I would like to ask you, what are you doing for the kingdom of God? Anything you do in the, for the kingdom of God, remember it's written down. Jehovah writes it down. And at the end of ages, you'll reap your reward. And also you can still reap your reward right here on earth. Because God will be smiling. And you know just a smile on God's face is enough to change fortunes for you. So what are you what are you as an individual doing for God for the kingdom of God You know that's why I keep saying uh, even if you subscribe if you press that button you subscribe and then you share and you tell your friends and their friends you are chipping in the kingdom you might not know but your reward is on the way because we'll be spreading and people will know about the kingdom. Remember, even we've been given instructions in Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, go unto all the world and preach the gospel unto all creation. So when you subscribe, when you share, when you talk about the kingdom, you say so and so, you better watch so and so. It's talking about God. You'll be playing your part, which is very important. Don't even think that you'll be doing nothing. Never despise the days of small beginnings. Uh, and because as we carry on, you'll find that in Matthew 24, 14, also Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom, what we are talking about, shall be preached in all the world for all, for our witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So, and I thank God for the technology that we have nowadays. You find it's going viral. I might be talking here. Maybe somebody in North Korea is listening to it. Somebody in Australia. 
somebody in Nigeria, in Kenya, South Africa, Uganda, Egypt, Canada. I mean, in all the earth, we are spreading the word and the word will enter each and every corner according to God. Before he comes, each and every corner of the world, everyone will have heard about the kingdom of God. God really needs us to preach about his, his kingdom. That's why Jesus was always talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom, all, almost all his preachings were about the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. And we are told, first seek the kingdom of God and all the rest will be added unto you. So let's try as much as possible to go for the kingdom and everything else will be open for you you'll find in romans 8 19 20 okay let's say uh, let's go to uh, romans 8 19 20 let me just read it quickly romans romans 8 19 20 it says For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. You, me, we are the sons of God. The, the creature, the creation, the whole creation is waiting. They are eagerly waiting to know about God because they are lost. Number 20 says, verse 20, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. You see, the world has been lied to, the enemy has lied to the world, completely confused them, told them there is no God, but the world just, they follow, they just follow, there is no God. If you put him down, you try to reason, but deep down he knows there is a supreme being but they don't know how to go about it that's our job at least to show the world that jesus is real and jesus is king he's the king of kings and the lord of lords and i can assure you if you do this just try holiness follow the lord's precepts and laws and you'll see your reward is there waiting for you just I mean, it will be exciting. It will be an exciting journey. Thank you for that. Okay, let's go to today's reading. Today's book is in Exodus 19. It's about Israel, a holy nation. Okay, uh, if we go to Exodus 19, 4 to 6, let me just read quickly for you guys. And it says, Exodus 19, 4-6. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. That's God, God talking to the Israelites through Moses. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my command, covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6 says, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So these are the words that Moses was given to speak to the children of Israel. And... Uh, let me just go to the Torah in Torah verse 5 and 6 in the Torah it says because it's very interesting you know the Torah usually it's they call it Exodus in Torah in Jewish they call it Shemot Shemot so in Shemot Verse 5 and 6, 
this is because the Bible, the King James Version, the NIV, they translated it from Torah to English to Greek, and but originally it was the Torah. So let's see the original, what it says. And it goes like this, verse 5 and 6. And now if you obey me and keep my covenant, you shall be to me a treasure of all peoples. They'll be to God a treasure of all peoples. For mine is the entire earth. They'll be his, his treasure in the entire earth. Six, and you shall be to me a kingdom of princes and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the children of Israel. So, you see, the thing that happened here is uh, we all know as the Israelites kept on moving, they stopped giving thanks, following God's commands, and things started going wrong for them completely, completely. They started complaining, and surely when you start complaining, the blessings are no, the blessings are no longer coming. In a, even in Matthew. 12.34 tells us this. Let me... Uh, Matthew 12.34 It says... Uh, Matthew 12... Yeah, Matthew 12.34 And it says... O generation of vipers! How can you, being evil... That's Jesus talking speak good things for out of the aban abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh so these guys the israelites it was out of their hearts that's how they started disobeying god completely and god was not pleased so he didn't bless them according to his plans he was so disappointed and usually I just let's go to Romans eleven fifteen. Say so let's let's see Romans eleven eleven to fifteen. It says, uh, "No, uh, what um, uh, uh, when when God just before we read that one, when God got angry, he was." He knew he had to look for some, for people who will take over from the Jews. Yes, the Jews are still his children. And you can imagine, or rather I still imagine, that as we speak today, is the Israelites are so blessed. Israel is blessed. They've, got so, they've done so many discoveries. I mean the Jews on, the, on medicine, changing seawater, using it for irrigation and it's salty water I mean, they are just so blessed and now and they still rebelled against, they rebelled against God now you can imagine how much greater riches they could be having if they all followed God's, God's laws the way it was originally unfortunately they were complaining so God decided since these people are complaining too much, I'll use other people to make them jealous so that they'll come back to me. Okay, if we go to uh, so I was saying, Romans 11, 11 to 15, it says, mm, I, mm, Paul says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. You see, they fell, the Jews fell, and God decided to give salvation to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. That means we, the Gentiles, we are going, if you trust in God, trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God is going to use you in a manner such that the 
Israelites will be jealous. The Jews will be jealous of you. They, I mean, they won't believe what's happening. So that, according to God, so that they can go back. They can come back to God. But God wants to use you and me to provoke them to jealousy. So that when every, we are the grafted branches. So when everything come, comes back, then according to God, everything will be okay. And then verse 12 says, it goes like this. Uh, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? You can imagine if the, all the riches of the world and the Gentiles, they, have, they were supposed to be for the Jews. But now, since they disappointed God, God decided, no, let me give it, let, let me distribute it. For I speak to you Gentiles, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconcil reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? God really insists on this. He wants to cast away these guys so that the world will be reconciled. Okay. Uh, in Romans 12, 11 to 12, it says... Uh, you know, this is what God really wanted the Jews to be doing in uh, Exodus 19. Not to be slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He really wanted them to serve Him in one accord. But they couldn't do that because they had their own issues. And, you know, it's, there's nothing that could have been done. God could... God could not help them. God really wanted to change the world through the Jews. But anyway, some of them are, they believe in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And it will be step by step and things will be okay. Okay, uh, if we go to Exodus 19, 10 to 13, it says this. Exodus 19, 10 to 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon the Mount Sinai. Sinai. 12. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people around them, saying, Take heed to yourself, but that you go not up into the mount or touch the border the border of the mountain whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death there shall not an hand touch it for he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be beast or man it shall not live when the trumpet soundeth long they shall come up to the mount In Exodus, these verses, these guys were not supposed to touch the mountain. God was, the God's pres presence was there. And as we've been going through our teachings, God is holy. And he's not ready to be contaminated. So, and he knew these guys were not pure. They, I mean, something holy you can't mix it with something which is unholy. So God didn't want anything that's not holy to touch him. That's why you find even today, if we are holy, if we as our people are holy, since God's presence will be with us because we are his new temple, no evil schemes or anything will come and attack us. 
that is if you are holy you know th those days it was about uh, the mountain going to the mountain but now it's like the mountain has come to us now in the name of the holy spirit god has moved into us now we are his temple and if we are his temple we ought to be holy let's go to first corinthians let me see first corinthians 6 17 and it says first corinthians 6 17 but he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit you know right now that's just what i've said god used to be in the mountain that's where he dwelt during the era of moses and in the olden times but now when jesus came jesus did his work and he left us with the holy he sent the holy spirit the holy spirit is god's presence in us so that means in a uh, verse 17 it says but he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit our spirit and the lord's spirit we are one and then it's in verse 19 6 19 it says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which you have of god and you are not your own for you are bought you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are gods you see your body and your spirit are gods they are all gods so if you think that it's your body you can do anything you want to do with it i'm telling you, my friend it's not your body it's god's body uh, there's one more here first Cor corinthians 3 16 and it says first corinthians 3 16 316 yeah first Corinthians 3 oh, sorry 316 it goes like this know ye uh, uh, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you we are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in us so guys trust in god worship god follow god in all give thanks to him for he is the holy one the mighty one of israel we should trust in him all the time every time because without god man can't but with God, we, without God, man can't. Without man, God will not. He wants to use you. He really wants to use you. Okay, guys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's pray. I thank you guys for everything. If you, if you are there and you don't believe in God, in Jesus, just say, follow, follow me, say, uh, Oh Jesus, I come before you, I trust in you, forgive me my sins, cleanse me of all my sins, I want to be part of the nation, part of that kingdom, I want to be holy, I want the Holy Spirit to dwell in me, to perform the miracles, the signs and wonders that you promised, you've written for me, for my generation, I want to change my generation. I want to live a holy life. Forgive me. Cleanse me of all my sins. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. And also, when you are, mm, since you are there, guys, I just want to say a blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you be blessed when you leave, get out of the house, when you come back. May you be blessed in everything you do. May you be blessed. Peace be upon you. See you next time. Shalom. Peace. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay.